2011 comes and you get some news that you have been very vocal about, which I, I yeah. appreciate a lot. You end up with type one diabetes in 2011. Mm -hmm. yep. And I guess at that time you're, I was about halfway through my eighth grade year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I how, was, like, tell me when yeah. you heard the news and just tell me how that felt. Yeah. That was, um, very jarring for me and my family. And it just was a moment of like, okay, this is, this is new. This is, uh, this, this put my whole world on pause for a minute because, uh, you know, now everything that I had aspirations of and, and enjoyed doing was like all of a sudden thrown in the air. And, um, I, my mom likes to tell a story all the time about when, so we went to see my, uh, family practice doctor who did the blood work and it came back like my blood sugar was like 700 something like sit like astronomically high I think uh, so normal blood sugar is is from somewhere between 80 and 150 yeah my and so you want to be right around 100 mine was like seven times that and so you I was probably two or two or 300 points away from like going into serious like diabetic shock and so um we we were going down to he referred us down to the children's hospital in downtown atlanta and um on the way there my mom likes to tell a story about how she looks over and i'm like on my phone and i'm googling like nfl players with type 1 diabetes because i wanted that reassurance that the goals and the aspirations and the dreams that I had had since I was able to walk were still going to be able to come true. And, and fortunately now I can be a name on that list when there's a kid who's diagnosed with type one diabetes and wants to know if he can be a professional athlete, he or she can be a professional athlete. Like I'm another person that can stand here and say, it is possible. Like there is nothing about, this disease that you are now living with that can stop you. And Brian, that's an unbelievable story. I appreciate that. And, and, you know, from the, like, from the onset, I was determined to not allow it to be a hindrance. Um, and I, I'm sure that that's just from the, the mentality that my parents sort of instilled in both my brother and I. Um, but it didn't really matter what it was like. It was, I'm, I'm very, very blessed and fortunate that it's a disease that I can live with and manage and that it wasn't, you know, some sort of terminal cancer or something like that, that you may not be able to overcome, but I wasn't, I wasn't going to allow it to keep me from experiencing the beauty of playing in the NFL and, and achieving a goal, um, you know, just because it, it was difficult and it, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of adversity. Um, coach McDaniel has a, has a quote in our, uh, in our building that adversity is an opportunity. And he says it all the time. And, and I think it's true. Like adversity can be an opportunity for amazing things if you allow it to be, or it can hold you back and you can never, you know, achieve what you probably should have. Um, and so I think that that's a, that's an awesome reminder that like, just because things aren't going the way you expected it to, or things aren't going the way that you planned, doesn't mean that you have to stop there.